It's one thing to be barely over the edge with diabetes, to have just a touch of it. But it's another thing entirely to have massive, over-the-top, sky-high blood sugar. You know, the kind where your A1C reaches 10 or 12 or 14 or more. What can you do then? Well, I can't tell you what to do, but in this video, I'll tell you what I would do. One of the things that makes me a little different from many of the diabetic instructors and doctors is that I'm one of you. I'm not a doctor, I'm not a professional nutritionist, but I am a guy who got hit with all the symptoms of approaching diabetes and took it seriously and managed to get things under control. Now, because I went right after it while my metabolic system was just in the process of breaking down, I've never had the experience of having a doctor talking to me in a grave voice and telling me that I have raging diabetes with an A1C of 9 or more and glucose numbers up to 200, 300, or 400. I got mine under control before it ever came to that, and as far as I know, my A1Cs have never even hit the 6.5 mark, which in America is the classic number that determines that you're diabetic. But since I've been doing this YouTube channel, which focuses on diabetes, I've heard from so many people who've had incredibly high A1Cs. In fact, in an interview I plan to be posting soon, I'm going to interview a fairly young man with the incredibly high A1C of 17, or at least that's what he was at. Hearing of all these sky-high A1Cs, you know, the kind where you're constantly thirsty, constantly urinating, your vision is totally blurred, your feet are either numb or they're killing you, it's made me think about just what I would do, knowing what I know now, if I were in that situation. And so I determined to make a video to answer that question. Just what would I do? What steps would I take if I just came home from the doctor with an A1C in the double digits? My body, my health, my life was falling apart, and I knew that unless I experienced some kind of major intervention, I'm in big, big trouble. But before we get to the steps I would take, I want to share an illustration with you to kind of set the stage and give you a mental picture of what raging diabetes is really all about. Let's imagine I'm walking down a city street at night, minding my own business. Suddenly, out of an alley, a huge thug comes up to me and picks a fight with me. The man is bigger than me, stronger than me, tougher than me, and on top of all that, he's carrying a tire iron. He immediately lets me know he's not my friend, and he begins to beat me, punching me, kicking me, and hitting me all over my body with his tire tool. And these are not just light, easy blows. He's hitting me with all his force, and he is one big, tough dude. Doesn't take me long to figure out I'm in trouble, real trouble. Now, I'll fight him the best I can, but he and I both know I'm no match for him. Every punch and kick that he lands, every crack of his tire tool on my bones is weakening me, and I realize if I don't get some kind of help, this guy's going to kill me. Some people nearby see the fight, and they gather around to watch. They realize I'm the good guy here, and they try to give some advice. They don't actually help me much, but they figure their advice is help enough. But it's very strange advice. I cry out to the onlookers, Help me, please! This guy's going to kill me! A little old lady shouts to me with a shrill voice, Have you had your vitamin C today? I yell back, What are you talking about? I don't need vitamin C. I need a weapon or maybe two. One man tells me, Just take the blows. The more you get hit, the tougher you'll get, and eventually you'll win the fight. I can't believe such stupid advice. Another person tells me, I think what you need is just punch a little harder. If you punch harder, I think you can beat this guy. I shout back at him, I'm punching as hard as I can, and it's doing nothing at all. I need a weapon. Once, I pick up a rock to try to throw it at my adversary, but one of the old men shouts out at me, No, 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 do all things in moderation. That rock is not moderate. Finally, I find a friend. A middle-aged man, dressed nicely, has just joined the crowd, watching me get the tar beat out of me. But this guy does more than watch. He shouts at me, Hey, you! 
and when I turn my head in his direction, he throws something at me. I catch it, and I realize he's just thrown me a taser. He says, give him a taste of that. Well, that sounds good to me, and when the bully moves in close to give me another blow, I touch him with the taser, sending a powerful electric shock through his body. He falls to the ground trembling and shaking. He can hardly believe that he's ended up on the losing end of the fight. Then my friend walks up to me and hands me a 45 Magnum revolver. He says, point this at him and tell him you're not afraid to use it. Well, I do just that, and the trembling bully staggers to his feet, takes one look at the revolver, turns tail, and runs for his life, screaming like a little girl. I turn back to my new friend and tell him, thank you, thank you, thank you, you saved my life. He tells me casually, oh, you just needed a couple of weapons. When you've got the right weapons in your hands, bullies are not nearly as tough as they seem. Well, I think all of you are bright enough to figure out what that bully represents, which is, of course, the scourge of diabetes. And like the bully in the story, diabetes can maim, it can kill, it can destroy your health day by day. But if you have and you use the right weapons, you'll find diabetes isn't quite as tough as it's made out to be. But let's get back to the question of what I would do, knowing what I know now, if I just found out I had raging, totally out-of-control diabetes with an A1C in the double digits. The first thing that needs to be said is that this is a totally different situation from somebody who's just moved into the pre-diabetic range of, let's say, 6.1. His doctor tells him, well, you need to be kind of careful. I don't like the direction you're going. Well, being pre-diabetic is not a good situation, but normally you have a little time to work on it, to try some things and be a little more moderate in your approach. You're not yet fighting for your life. You may be sometime later, but right now you're in the mode of researching, thinking, perhaps making some changes, but not necessarily drastic changes, at least not right away. But when your blood sugar is sky high and you're being beaten to death by the bully of diabetes every single day, you don't have the luxury of taking your time and gradually making some changes. You cannot possibly adopt the motto of moderation in all things. Moderation is going to be the death of you. You're literally killing yourself with that sky high blood sugar and you need to get radical and you need to find some weapons that will work powerfully against your enemy. The good news is those weapons exist. And if I just found out I had raging diabetes and say glucose levels of 300, 400, 500, I would make the necessary changes on a dime. So what would I do? First, I'd make radical permanent changes in my diet. I'd give up all bread immediately. Most bread, other than the keto bread that you make yourself, is going to raise blood sugar almost as quickly and as sharply as eating pure sugar. When it comes to blood sugar, there's very little difference between a piece of bread and eating several teaspoons of table sugar. I would give it up in a heartbeat. No more dinner rolls, no more hamburger buns, no more pretzels, bagels, donuts, biscuits, pasta, tortillas, chapatis, roti, naan, burritos, crackers, muffins, any form and every form of bread would be swept from my house. I would, of course, give up sugar, but also any foods containing sugar, such as ketchup, barbecue sauce, breakfast cereals, yogurt. I'd stop putting sugar in my coffee, stop putting sugar in my tea, or sprinkling sugar over anything at all. I would look on sugar as poison and stay as far away from it as possible. No more cake, no more ice cream, no more pie, no more candy bars. All of it must go. And horror of horrors, I would give up on all fruit except for berries. And even with them, I'd be careful. I'd give up on starches, especially rice, corn, and potatoes. No more french fries, no more baked potatoes, no more hash browns, no more grits, no corn on the cob, and dishes with rice. I'd lay off beans entirely. Now, I know beans can work for some, but when your blood sugar is in the stratosphere, even the iffy foods, those not entirely bad but not so great either, they would be stricken from my diet. Now, you may be saying, what in the world would you eat? 
I would focus on meat and low-carb vegetables, eggs, cream, and cheese, avocados and nuts, berries, but not too many. Now, some of the foods that I mentioned earlier that I would give up might be okay to reintroduce into your diet later once you get things under control. I do eat certain forms of lower-carb bread at times. I sometimes will eat a small bowl of beans. But if I had incredibly high blood sugar, I wouldn't. My one goal in life would be to survive until I can get my blood sugar under control. This is no time for moderation. This is no time to worry about whether I'm missing out on getting a little extra nutrition when I skip fruit. This is time to annihilate my enemy. Afterwards, I might be a little more moderate, but not now. For now, this is war. This radical restriction in carbohydrates is one of the most powerful weapons you can ever use against the bully of diabetes. Exercise is good, but it's more like a slingshot. Carbohydrate restriction is like a cannon. Diabetes cannot stare down the barrel of it without fearing and trembling. When you slash those carbohydrates from your diet, you're literally starving diabetes, choking the life out of it, and it has no choice but to retreat. But I wouldn't stop with just one weapon. There is another weapon almost as powerful. When it's combined with serious carbohydrate restriction, diabetes is nearly always beaten, and often within a matter of a few months. What is the second weapon? It's what has been popularly called intermittent fasting, but I prefer to call it time-restricted eating, since you're not really fasting, you're simply limiting the amount of time each day that you're going to eat. Of course, if you go a whole day without eating, then I would call that fasting, but if you're simply saying, I'm only going to eat between the hours of, say, 9 uh, a.m. to 5 p.m. each day, well, I don't think that's really fasting. You're just restricting the amount of time you're going to eat. The problem with many Americans and people all over the world is that their window of eating lasts from the moment they get up in the morning until the time they go to bed at night. When they're not eating meals, they're snacking. When they're not snacking, they're eating meals. And this constant grazing and snacking is unnatural, unhealthy, strength-sapping, blood sugar-raising, and a perfectly miserable way to live. But on the other hand, to restrict your hours of eating to a couple of meals, perhaps five or six hours apart, and then refuse to eat again until that time rolls around the next day, has proven to be an absolute game changer for diabetics. Or should I say former diabetics? Because that is what you will be once you employ the weapon of carbohydrate restriction and time-restricted eating. You will become, according to the numbers, a former diabetic. I recently heard an interview with Dr. Jason Fung, and he was saying that for most of his patients, he puts much more emphasis on intermittent fasting than he does a low-carb diet. Not because he doesn't believe in cutting the carbs, but he finds that most people have an easier time with cutting down their window of eating than they do figuring out how to do low-carb and then doing it. But if one devastating weapon is good, two devastating weapons are wonderful. If I found out I had sky-high diabetes, I wouldn't mess around with a gentle, mild form of time-restricted eating. No 12-hour window or 10-hour window for me. I would go to probably a 5-hour window and have my first meal every day at about 1 p.m., my second meal and last meal, low-carb of course, at 6 p.m., and that would be it. Once dinner was over, not a bit of food, not even a couple of eggs, would touch my lips until the next day at 1 p.m. Now, I probably would have some coffee with heavy cream and butter in it as a breakfast substitute. You may be saying, man, that's pretty radical. Yeah, it is, but diabetes is nothing to mess around with. Neuropathy is pretty radical. Losing your eyesight is pretty radical. Having to urinate every 15 minutes is pretty radical. Having your legs cut off above the knee is pretty radical. And dying 15 years too soon is pretty radical. I would far rather make some radical diet and lifestyle changes than have some radical health problems destroying my body. Now, the window of eating may be opened wider once you get things under control, but while you're in that fight for your life, 
it's better to keep that eating window pretty small. Every hour that you do not eat is bringing you restoration and health. I mentioned that diet is far more powerful than exercise, but I would exercise. I wouldn't necessarily go to the gym every day, but I would use something like an elliptical trainer, which is in fact what I do, or a treadmill, or simply go for a half an hour walk. But the best exercise of all is the exercise of your will when you say no to potatoes, no to Little Debbie's, no to ice cream, no to rice, and so forth. One other thing I would do, I would watch videos like this one and other similar ones and read good books such as those by Dr. Jason Fung and Dr. Richard Bernstein to keep my motivation high. Can diabetes really be beaten? Oh yeah, it can. We get reports daily from happy, excited, enthusiastic, former diabetics who have joined the club. What club is that? It's the club of those who have seen their A1C dip down into the fives, or sometimes even the fours, and that's a great club to be in. But you'll never join this club with little, mild, moderate, cautious efforts. Bullies are not impressed with moderate, cautious people, but they are terrified when you're carrying the right weapons and willing to get as radical as you have to to win the fight. And there is another thing I would do if I had sky-high blood sugar. I would pray. In fact, I would pray before anything else. You didn't just pop into existence, and you're not an accident. You were made by the divine creator, and he is more than willing to jump into your fight with you and give you the victory. And if you're wondering, why did God give me diabetes? The answer is, he didn't. Type 2 diabetes is pretty much a do-it-yourself disease. We eat horribly, and then we reap horrible results. Okay, that's it for now. Hope you found this helpful. If so, give it a thumbs up. The more likes a video gets, the more active YouTube will be in promoting it to others, and more diabetics will get to see it. And consider subscribing to this channel and then click the bell icon so you'll be notified every time we post a new video. God bless. See you again soon.